Hello guys, this is Wilverd Audio and uh, now it is a uh, fairy tale time or I would say like, uh, like um, you know, when they are reading uh, bedtime stories for kids now these are bedtime stories for people who who want to know more about loudspeakers and uh, so this is now the fairy tale time about how important really is the frequency response curve of, of the driver because lately I've been uh, going through the frequency response curves of uh, 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 many different uh, drivers and in the past I have shown uh, the measurements for loudspeakers and uh, and and basically I, I, I've told you guys what I think of each of them what do those mean how they translate to real life but now I want to get into uh, the application of it a little bit more because the frequency response curve is uh, not everything so let's just get back I, I had this for from the last time so if you look at a random driver and you look at the frequency response curve uh, first of all the the bold line uh, or may usually it's bold or just say black or whatnot it will tell you what is the on axis response so basically you will be uh, receiving this information from the driver if you are pointing the loudspeaker directly at your ears and and then the second line here which is the dotted line uh, that's uh, like 30 degrees of axis and basically that represents something very similar to what you would hear if the loudspeakers are not pointing towards your face towards your ears but they are str pointing straight uh, to your room so basically they are parallel with the wall behind and and you are sitting in the center you have the two loudspeakers here they are not towed in so they are not angled towards you they are straight that's what you are getting there's the 30 degrees of axis response and then there's the 60 degrees of axis response there's the second dotted line there that is what you would get if you would be sitting uh, very close uh, to the speakers so basically let's say that the two of them are let's say uh, three meters apart and you are sitting here like less than two meters away from the speaker so that's like a, a scenario that you would get in a movie theater when you are sitting in the first rows so basically the speakers are firing to, to the away from you and uh, and then you are in the middle and you are just getting the uh, the sides of the answer and and the brunt and you are not getting the uh, the direct uh, center uh, of the output from the drivers and they, and this is very typical this is always what happens if you are on axis you get the most highs and and the further you move away from uh, on axis you are getting less and less of the high frequencies but for the mid range and upper bass and mid bass uh, it, it's totally unaffected and you always you see that it's it will be around this two kilohertz range when, when the on-axis, off-axis response will start to be uh, different between loudspeakers. And, but how important that is, and, and, and you will see that uh, there are drivers which have this, this flat response curve, and everyone wants flat, and there are others when you see that there's like a huge uh, up, in, in, in like the very high frequencies or like 5 to 10k uh, there's the big uh, blip like a, a huge uh, hump there and uh, and of course we would prefer this uh, straight thing but uh, what if you have that that upper big uh, hump there in the high frequencies uh, how you can handle that or is it a bad driver because uh, the high frequencies uh, uh, are, are climbing uh, higher and higher and higher there is no such thing as good and bad it's all all depends on the applications so for example if you have a room which is really dead sounding so I mean like you have like a tons of uh, furniture inside very heavy curtains uh, very big uh, rugs 
and uh, you have uh, like a popcorn ceiling uh, you have like bookcases like record racks like covering every wall of yours you have maybe a small um, like plants inside so lots of stuff that soak up acoustic energy then if you have a flat response like that then you will be missing a lot of the high frequency information because your room will be absorbing a lot and and even though you are getting this from the uh, from the loudspeaker on axis but uh, but in almost every single case even if you are sitting on axis the majority of the information that your ear gets is the reflection from your room so it uh, what we hear from our stereo even if we are pointing the speakers uh, uh, to us even if we are on axis more than 50 percent of the acoustic energy that reaches the ear is room reflection and that's why if you have a dead room even if you have a flat loudspeaker the, the high frequencies will be dropping off like, uh, like really really heavily and and you would think that i need a super tweeter and uh, and, and 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 usually in those cases you might want to do something but you have to realize that the problem is not with the drivers not because they are not extended enough it's because your room is soaking up all the high frequency energy and there if you have a, a driver which which peaks uh, here have has an ex a b really big peak like for many of the uh, drivers we have seen lately i have shown lately in those cases you will hear a flat response in your room because it compensates for your room and that's why there's like tons of drivers that are built that way because they will work really well in rooms which are uh, soaking up high frequency energy and uh, the other case is true as well if you have a room where you don't have uh, any furniture inside and maybe you even have glass walls or, or you have that uh, blasted coffee table with the glass top in front of you between the speakers and you that's the main culprit uh, or, or a big culprit uh, to to just uh, blast high frequency energy to your ears because all the high frequency energy is going to ping pong from the glass table and the glass will resonate and amplify those high frequencies and you will get tons of high frequency energy reaching your ears from your room from the reflections and in those cases when you have a response like that you will still hear it super extended and and tons of high frequency energy and you might want even even though your loudspeaker response is level you might not want to tow them to your ears because it will be too much because uh, from your coffee table and from the rooms you will have this high frequency energy maybe increasing to this big hump and then you if you uh, just keep your loudspeakers uh, front so that you are sitting 30 degree off axis so uh, from the direct output of your loudspeaker you are getting that much less but the room adds this big so they end up leveling out in the level and that's what you will feel that it's natural for you and and if you have a loudspeaker that has this big peak in the output if you uh, keep them towed out uh, uh, like zero toe in uh, then you will have uh, this sort of range like dropping up to here but because of the room reflections you will still end up with an excessive peak in the high frequency and and you will just want to get rid of those speakers very very fast but then when you move into a different room that has a lot of furniture uh, no no big glass surfaces you do you lose your coffee table uh, and maybe you put uh, like a heavy rug in front of you then uh, you might want that loudspeaker back that has this big hump over here and i would say that the wisest strategy to choose a driver is um, especially in the high frequency zone look at the high frequency zone 
that it will be critical to match your room so you might want it flat or you might want it uh, a hump here uh, to work with your room so that's why the audio nirvana drivers have all that that hump here uh, because they will work very well if your room has a lot of stuff so for example you have uh, like 5000 records in your room then uh, they will dampen the sound enough that that you will need that extra output there and uh, now what else I want to talk about in this video so basically I think let's just make this the, the high frequency energy output for the drivers as, uh, as another indicator for the high frequency energy and, and I would say that uh, for these valleys and peaks when you see them uh, they are not necessarily an evil thing and, and they um, and even if you correct them you might not get a better sound you will just get a different sound because what all of these uh, uh, graphs tell us uh, that um, is just the frequency domain response it doesn't tell you the phase uh, response and it doesn't tell you other details like um, like the electrical well it tells the electrical property as well but if, if we change the the frequency domain here that will also change the phase domain and it will also change the electrical uh, behavior of the speaker so if we change one variable then we will be affecting two or three or four or five other variables as well and maybe we can fix problem a but by fixing problem a we are, are, are messing up problem b and c so that's why there's no perfect response and if you're looking for a driver there is not going to be a perfect driver there's going to be a solution which will work better in your room or not because the main thing is that uh, the driver uh, it has to communicate well with your room plus it also needs to communicate well with your amplifier and, uh, and, and we choose the loudspeaker cabinet to shape the interaction between both the uh, loudspeaker driver and amplifier and loudspeaker driver and your room so that's the art of making a loudspeaker cabinet or whether it be a horn open buffer or bass reflex that it needs to fulfill this dual role to communicate between amp and and the room and and we and when you when we start planning out a loudspeaker project that's why we need to first have a look at uh, at the at the phase uh, i mean at the frequency response domain because that will tell us where what what is our blank slate where, where is it where, where we are starting out from and then the next thing you can factor in is your room response that if if we have that big the uh, hump here then it will work really well in, a, in an over damped room and and if we have it flat that will work really well in an empty room basically um, so so that's it for now I hope everyone uh, learned a little bit from this and uh, oh wow okay that's not where I wanted to go so basically I would say frequency response is very important to start off uh, but um, we do not want to just uh, get a flat frequency response of, of, an, of, an, of a bare driver and um, because there is much more things that need to work out to, to make things work so I think now I'm starting to overcomplicate myself because uh, I am trying very badly to uh, to tell you guys that there are there's a lot more to it, uh, but uh, I have I am kind of failing to do that in putting it to a few sentences because it's such such a vastly complex issue. So for now, I hope that's a good message for today to look at at. At the upper range of the frequency response curve if it's flat for lively room if it has a hump that's for uh, very well dampened rooms so please like subscribe and have fun 
Feed your drivers. Bye-bye.